This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, July 6th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal, filling in for Zoe Thomas. European lawmakers voted to approve two new pieces of digital legislation on Tuesday. The laws would address anti-competitive behavior by tech companies and harmful or illegal online content. Taken together, the new rules are the most far-reaching efforts by Western countries to rein in big tech in at least a generation. But they're also likely to lead to clashes between regulators and tech companies over how they should be applied. Here to tell us more is WSJ tech reporter Sam Schechner, who's been covering the story for us. Hi, Sam. Thanks for coming on the show. Always a pleasure. So, Sam, can you start us off by telling us more about the two new laws passed in the EU? What exactly do they entail? Well, these are laws that the EU proposed just over a year and a half ago. It's remarkably quick for any kind of legislation, especially in the EU. And they're aimed at addressing what policymakers here say are, you know, abuses by dominant companies on one hand, and also a failure by companies in the social media space and e-commerce space they purport to deal with harmful content, which are two of the big kind of pressure points around tech companies globally. So the first one is called the Digital Markets Act. That's the digital competition law. And it has all kinds of very specific obligations that it puts on very large companies defined by their market cap and their number of business users and consumer users. And the basic idea is that over many years, there have been a bunch of antitrust cases that the EU has tried to bring against some of these companies. And some of them have been successful. Some of them haven't. Some of them are still in court. In this case, they want to just kind of make the remedies that you might win after a protracted antitrust battle, they want to make them preemptive requirements for any large company. So things like, hey, you can't, if you're a large platform, make your goods and services more visible on your platform than those of competitors, which recapitulates a case that the EU brought against Google and its shopping service, which is still in court. There's also obligations around, for instance, allowing other app stores onto your devices, which is something that the EU is interested in pushing on Apple, for instance. So that's the Digital Markets Act. The Digital Services Act imposes a kind of sliding scale of requirements on social media companies leading up to the very largest companies have a whole bunch of auditing requirements and personnel requirements. And they basically have to be able to show that they're doing everything they can to deal with potentially harmful content, that they have robust systems in place, that they have appeals mechanisms if content is taken down, but maybe it shouldn't have been. And, you know, it's going to force companies to have large teams of content moderators and independent appeals processes that satisfy the law or under both of these laws if they don't comply the companies could face potentially massive fines in the billions or tens of billions of dollars and you've been talking to the big players that would be affected by these rules as well as some of the smaller companies how have they been responding well you know i think a lot of the companies are taking a somewhat cautious outlook on this at least publicly they don't want to you know, poke a regulator who's suddenly going to have massive power over them. So in general, the comments are, we're looking at it, we're going to comply, of course. You know, when you get into the details, some of them express publicly and and especially privately concern about how some of these rules will be applied and, and how workable they'll really be in reality. And, you know, Apple is particularly concerned about the requirement that it allow other app stores onto its devices, saying that that could be a security issue. And you have, you know, also some smaller social media companies that still would be covered by the Digital Services Act, saying, at least privately, that the law is too onerous and that only the biggest companies really could afford to do all of the the things that are asked, all of what they would call box checking exercises that are asked in the DSA, and that in a way it would help them at the expense of smaller companies. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of griping and, and potentially some, you know, court appeals into the future. So the European Parliament voted to approve the two laws. Now, what does this mean going forward? What's next? Well, the laws were effectively agreed a couple months ago. This is sort of the biggest high-profile hurdle to kind of rubber stamping that agreement. Next, the member states have to approve the laws in, you know, sort of the 
European equivalent of what would be the U.S. Senate. And once they've both signed off, then it becomes law. It gets published in, you know, the European equivalent of the Federal Register. And then in each of the laws, there's different periods before certain provisions become effective. But within the, you know, next year or so, many of these provisions will apply. And so what we have is companies already, before the ink is even printed, much less dried, working on compliance. They have teams figuring out what might work, and they're sending suggestions already for how they think, you know, some of their services should or shouldn't apply under different provisions. So those negotiations or suggestions are are already underway. And, you know, we're going to enter into a really furious period of, of trying to figure out how these rules will apply to big tech companies. And I think everyone around the world is going to be watching how this plays out, um, whether it turns into a, a roadmap or a cautionary tale is something that we'll be looking at closely. All right. That was our reporter, Sam Schechner. Sam, thank you so much for being here. It's great to speak with you. Thanks for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening. Thank you.